It does not matter whether you are a project manager, an accountant, or a software engineer. Being able to effectively manage your projects can have a huge impact on the successful delivery of what you're working on. Not to mention being able to parallelize your work frees up time for you so you can invest on other areas that are important to you. I have worked on hundreds of projects of all shapes and sizes, some for work, others as side projects, from highly technical to not technical at all. And I can tell you that a project can literally be anything. For example, building a piece of software, fixing your car, creating a YouTube video, learning piano, or improving parts of your home. These are all projects. But the problem is that most of us only consider things we do for our day job as projects. And as a result, waste a lot of time and efficiency in all the other things we spend time on. If it starts someday, ends someday, and needs time investment from you, it's a project. And you should treat it that way. And in this video, I'll show you how to effectively manage any project by focusing on three core areas. Hi folks, my name is Utsav. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle. If you're new to my channel, my goal here is to help you get the best out of your career by mentoring you around five key pillars of career development. Technical skills, engineering efficiency, mindset, entrepreneurship, and financial freedom. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel and follow me at Utsavais for behind the scenes and monthly Q&As. At its core, the goal of managing a project is to answer three questions. What are you working on? How long will it take you to finish it? Will anything block your progress towards completion? To elaborate on these, I'll be using two projects as examples. I'll walk you through a startup concept that I'm currently working on, which is more of a traditional engineering project. But I'll also delve into a not so common example of a project by showing you how I handle the many moving parts and dependencies of running this YouTube channel, where I treat each video as a standalone project. Traditional project management tools are great at managing projects, but they often fall far short of being able to act as your second brain. If you don't know what a second brain is, it is a system that allows you to effectively leverage digital tools to augment your thinking, creativity, and productivity. Our brains are not optimized for storage and retrieval of information, so the second brain helps you offload your cognitive load and manage your knowledge, allowing you to free up mental resources for higher level thinking. If you've followed me in this channel for a while, you know that Notion is an integral part of my second brain because of its flexibility. If you don't know what Notion is, it's basically a super flexible connected workspace, but it lacked dedicated project management capabilities, necessitating the use of additional tools that resulted in a lot of redundant information. This, however, changed when they launched Notion Projects, literally a game changer that greatly simplifies project management so that just about anyone can adopt and use it. Since I already have all of my project-related information in Notion, now being able to organize them and include them in sprints, pull requests, and dependency charts is just the icing on the cake. So when Notion reached out to sponsor this video, I was beyond excited. That being said, the concepts from this video can be exercised using any project management tool. But if you care for flexibility, simplicity, and seamless integration with the rest of your information archive, I highly recommend trying out Notion projects. With that said, let's look at the three core phases of project management with some examples. Knowing what to build is a crucial aspect of project management as it involves identifying project goals and deliverables. Clear understanding and articulation of these objectives are essential for project success. Project goals define the desired outcomes and overarching purpose of the project. These goals serve as a guiding light, helping the team stay focused and aligned throughout the project lifecycle. To get started with our goals and objectives, let's create a new Notion project. As you can see, it automatically adds a lot of sections by default that you can use to lay out your project's primary goals. Or you can customize it to fit whatever works for you. For an engineering project, you can use uh, docs section to store all your authoritative documents, your project goals, deliverables, requirements, MVP, experiments, so on and so forth. These high-level goals should inform you of your features and deliverables. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of a project that I'm currently working on. In my case, the team space is organized into eight sections. Knowledge base, wiki, docs, meetings, features, tasks, sprint board, and sprint. Okay, so the next step is knowing how long each of those features will take. Accurate estimation helps in planning resources, setting expectations, and ensuring timely project delivery. 
Estimating project timelines involves breaking down the project scope into smaller tasks or work packages and estimating the time effort required for each task. Various estimation techniques such as expert judgment, historical data analysis, analogous estimation or parametric estimations can be used to determine uh, task durations. But that deserves a video of its own. Uh, there's also some debate on the hierarchical structure of a project. Some use user stories, features, tasks. Others use goals, deliverables, and tasks. Some of the projects I have worked on use epic, feature, product backlog item, and tasks. But what you use doesn't really matter. The idea is the same, to break down a higher level goal into smaller tasks. This is called decomposition. While these complex hierarchies work for a large team where each level has a different set of stakeholders, I recommend keeping it simple if you have a small team or are just by yourself. I personally use features and tasks. So when decomposing a feature into multiple tasks, remember the word smart. Your tasks need to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound, providing a clear direction for exactly what needs to be done. Okay, so now we are ready to add tasks. Let me create an example feature for experimentation. Let's call it just that, experimentation. Pick a nice icon for it. Uh, the status is fine as planning. Let's say the date is from January 2024 to March 2024. Estimated and remaining are roll-ups, which are filled automatically. I will explain that a bit later in the video. Some of this stuff is automatically added by Notion, like status, owner, completion, etc. Uh, but you can easily add any of this by yourself or customize it to a more detailed view. If you see, it automatically also lists a Kanban board for the tasks. The stuff below the board is something I've created as a template. So when you create a template, you can automate the format and even some actions like creating tasks automatically. Let me add a task here. Let's call it define experimentation scope and set a due date of Jan 15, 2024. I also want to set the sprint to Jan 2024, uh, but looks like we don't have that sprint created yet. My sprints are only as far as end of 2023. So let's quickly add the new sprint. Okay, so now that we can select that sprint, let's go ahead and do that. And let's say that the task will take around four days. Okay, so now I can quickly add the description of what the task is about. Okay, and I also added a few common questions around experiments. A cool feature for Notion is also its integration with artificial intelligence. There's a field here called Summary AI, which is super useful. Once I have a bunch of details filled out, I can just click on it and hit update, and it will automatically create a summary based on all the details in the task. It's super cool. Okay, I'll quickly add another task for the implementation of the experiment here as well. Okay, now as I progress through the task for this feature, you can see that the estimated and remaining rollups automatically update. This rollup view is useful to get a sense of where your feature is. Also, as I complete the task, you can see that the completion percentage also updates automatically. Okay, so now let's take a look at a bit more complicated setup with my YouTube videos to see how I use dependencies to make sure my video production pipeline stays unblocked. Let me give you a brief context so you know how I make my videos. Each video is a project. Each video has multiple stages in the production pipeline. Concept, script, thumbnail, filming, editing, reviewing, and publishing. Some of these cannot happen until the previous ones happen. For example, I cannot edit a video until I film it. Now imagine working on four or five videos at the same time. One day I might have to edit a video, review another video, and film a different video. If any of these get blocked or delayed, that can jeopardize the complete publishing pipeline. Okay, so now let me show you how I make progress through these tasks and ensure that nothing is blocked in the pipeline. First, create a project, which is basically a video concept. Let's call it how to use Notion to manage projects. I already have a template that I use for all of my videos. And like I mentioned before, you can create templates to automatically fill in repeating stuff so that you don't have to do it every single time. Uh, so for me, all I have to do is just click on the template and the template also adds a button to create tasks for this video. If I click on that button, you'll see that it automatically adds 11 tasks to this project that I need to complete the video. And that's it for the creation of the video. 
The next step is for me to manage the tasks and put them in my calendar. The great thing about Notion is that it can hook to external applications. In my case, these tasks automatically sync up to my time management app. So if I open that, you can see that all those tasks are already showing up in my inbox. Now I can use my calendar app to arrange them however I feel like in my calendar. Let me quickly do that. Now, if I go back to the same project in Notion, you can see that all my tasks reflect the date and time from my actual calendar. But not just that, the real power here comes when I can see the full dependency view of all the projects I'm actively working on, which is super useful for me to visualize how my production pipeline looks like. And as I get the tasks done, all I need to do is mark them done in my calendar and they'll automatically reflect on Notion. And since we have marked everything done, except a few tasks, you can see that reflected as well. And also, if you look at Notion, it shows that the video project is 81.8% complete. So this flexibility of customizing views and integrating with external tools gives me an ability to completely see a bird's eye view of my project or dive deep with different views customized for specific projects or uh, a different view where I can focus into just one video and write the script and progress through the actual creation of the content or completely zoom out and see how my entire month, week, or even year looks like. And that's where the power of Notion comes into play because all of this information just stays in one place versus using something else where I have to copy paste this inf information, uh, use a different app to write script, use a different product to manage the calendar and they may or may not sync. This is just one place, everything awesome. Hopefully that gave you an idea of how you can manage your projects, especially if you juggle multiple time sensitive ones at the same time. And I also hope that this video gave you an idea of just how flexible and amazing Notion projects is. Thanks again to Notion for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in the nitty gritty of how I manage everything else with Notion, check out this other video I made. And if you want to know more about how I use time blocking to manage my own time, check out this other video that I made. Like this video if you found it useful and consider subscribing to the channel for more. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.